academician Lamar Aismo, and this is Wednesday View. We are uh, at the moment on uh, 13 February 2019. That's our date. And our time is a little after 11 on the East Coast here in the United States. And this is part two. So part one, I dated it as Wednesday View. I uh, missed the prior Wednesday because, as I've stated, I've been working a lot here in Slavelandia. Uh, other topics we're going to cover today. Uh, so until I exhaust these topics, because uh, sometimes people have trouble finding this, the different parts of the video, and I apologize for that. Um, example of, of my, my video, my series on uh, Japan and in, in the New World Order. Uh, the first video was enti entitled Tragedy and Hope because that was our source material, uh, Japan and the New World Order. And then uh, I, I did the title different on the other video, so I apologize for that. Um, but these Wednesday views, I'll, I'll just um, I'll date them. And then once I pass the first video, I'll put the uh, topic in parentheses or the main topic in the video. So let's continue on with our discussion. We we're talking about solutions and uh, depending on when I get done with this particular segment, um, this one might be entitled solutions, but I do have uh, other topics coming. I had another, I'm trying to respond to some of the comments too. I had another comment to ask about uh, my rapid weight loss in uh, a matter of a month uh, and we'll get to that. Uh, so we have these uh, solutions and, and, and st start in these small groups because we're not going to wake everyone up. And, and that'll be another, uh, that'll be actually, we'll, we'll talk about that in this video too, how to wake people up, uh, even the dumbest among us, you know, because I mean, I'm sorry to, to uh, label people that, but it's just some people, I don't understand how they go through their entire life uh, basking in, in Plato's cave. Uh, never thinking outside of the box, but uh, that's not us here. If, you, if you're a viewer or you stumbled across this channel. Now, um, these are the solutions of starting these groups. Again, do not, I repeat, there's no violence, no antagonizing the government because uh, you shouldn't antagonize people who are, <laughs> who are much more powerful than you and who can actually uh, kill or detain you uh, w without charge or trial. I mean, I don't, um, I don't think that's a good idea, especially given the laws that they passed. Uh, our freedom of speech is under threat. Uh, for example, for, for those who do support BDS, um, you know, that they're actually passing law and they have passed laws. And, and I think there's a slight majority of states now where you can't um, institutions and businesses cannot participate in the BDS without receiving uh, sanctions from the, a given state. So, for example, if you live in New York, supporting BDS can get you uh, boycotted by the state of New York, which you won't be able to make a living once that happens. But this is this is the country we live in. This is the country that um, your um, um, Brendan O'Connell's uh, thinks going to actually save the world, and that'll be another thing we'll discuss today. Um, according to the the Enigma report, um, Brendan O'Connell has said something even more loony than usual. So we'll laugh about that later. Uh, let me make a note of that because um, he said something so outlandish uh, that I think. Um, he should, his, his credibility shot out to this. We'll get to that. But, um, so yeah, once you have your group established, this is the best uh, solution because it can actually save your life um, literally and figuratively. You know, you can, because if you were to live in an actual community, and, and we all know, I've, I've said this in the past, that the Amish are an admirable a group in the United States, uh, in my opinion, because they've been able to sustain themselves and not go along with uh, the mainstream of society and uh, still maintain a decent living. They've paid a heavy price for that, though, but they're not beholden to any of these um, of to the grid. Uh, you know, they they're, they're, they maintain a lifestyle that um, lends them a lot of freedom. So if you're able to put together a group and I would say uh, no bigger than 50 individuals because from a lot of the studies I've read, we as human beings, uh, for most of our history, we only dealt with groups of uh, 50 to 100 people. So 
And the more people you you let join your group or you the bigger the group that you join yourself, uh, the more chances you'll run into of sabotage or, you know, espionage or surveillance from the powers that be. A prime example of, of that are, are groups that um, formed during the uh, civil rights movement or before the civil rights movement, such as the Nation of Islam and the, and the Black Panthers. Because what will end up happening is if your group is... Um, it can create a big enough impact and you you actually do become a, a blip on the, the powers that be radar. They'll send someone to inf- infiltrate your group and um, become a, either an agent provocateur, which is a person who will uh, do some criminal activity in the, in the name of your group in order to get your group demonized and get you uh, blacklisted or um, actually punished uh, uh, with the, uh, brutal force by the government. So you want to be leery of that. Um, too many people uh, with within your, your group would not be a good idea. But this group should basically, what you should do within this group is know what's going on and don't fall for it. Uh, don't be, uh, don't, don't subscribe to the uh, kill the darkies or kill whitey uh, narrative that the powers that be are very happy when we engage in, in that sort of foolishness because uh, it takes the heat off of them. And and you can still see this around the world. It happens all the time. I mean, uh, Southwest Asia, North Africa, what um, the uh, imperialists and the mainstream media uh, and, and ac- mainstream academia like to call the Middle East or the Near East, uh, what, it, what ends up um, getting them is what, you know, in their prime example of divide and rule, you know, and, and, and it's hard for me to continue to watch and to, and to keep up with events there when the people should know that um, they're being divided and ruled. I mean, you'll have these uh, populist movements within or faux populist because we know populism includes everyone. If, if, if a populist movement is legitimate, it cuts across all the uh, the strata and ethnicities within the society in order to um, foster a political conversation about how to make life better for the masses in general. That's real populism. Populism isn't um, it, it's not a um, a far right. Um, Unite the Right uh, Agent Provocateur Movement in, in Charlottesville, Virginia. Uh, populism is um, Williams uh, Jenning Bryant and people of that ilk who want to make life better for everyone and to uh, cut the hands of the uh, bankers and the uh, corporations that, that seek our destruction and slash or enslavement. But um, I digress. So you establish a group for self-defense and survival within reason. Because, again, you you shouldn't be um, a prepper who uh, these silly people who want to survive these silly doomsday scenarios that um, the only way you will be able to survive a lot of these scenarios that they prep for is if you're extremely lucky. Because uh, there's no way you could prep for some of the stuff as we mentioned before, and I'm not going to digress into some of the other other uh, wacky scenarios that these people want to survive. But um, you, you know, you should prep for um, you should prep, but um, w- within reason within your group. Uh, another thing that would help is um, just getting more consciousness um, in the in the ether, and um, as I stated before, we all know that um, everyone isn't going to wake up. But um, what is important is that you do, you or your group, try to wake up people. And um, it's hard to do when you have this information uh, because uh, a lot of people, they'll either ignore you, think you're making it all up, which is why uh, a lot of times when I'm doing my videos, I try to use actual sources to uh, corrob- corroborate uh, my opinions or what I'm stating is facts because some people don't want to believe facts. Like you, I had a coworker, you, you're trying to tell them about the USS Liberty and, you know, despite the actual people who were on the boat, 
the military personnel, including the commander of the ship or the captain, actually, I think in the Navy is uh, captains or colonels or it's, it's weird. I don't military rank. Um, I digress. But um, everyone from the captain down on that boat hated Israel for the rest of the life. And, and for the ones who are still alive, they still hate Israel and they hate our government for silencing them about the incident. But this guy from my job, I'm trying to explain to him, you know, Israel's not our friend. Look at the USS Liberty. Oh, no, that was an accident or they really didn't mean it. You have some people who just don't. They hate facts. It's just like uh, some relatives of mine who um, think that they're capitalists. <clears throat> you can't explain to them, like, uh, from factual evidence, what capitalism does, what, what these statements are. Victor Lebeau is a prime example of what capitalism is about, his uh, famous quote, which is one of my original videos, and I'll revisit that quote, but in essence, what this man said was, um, you have to figure out how to monetize everything and make a business or a service of, about, uh, of everything as much as possible, because that's the only way the economy will perpetually grow, because remember, with capitalism, you're supposed to have perpetual growth, uh, <laughs> You know, uh, it's it's crazy, you know, so, but I digress. So you want to try to wake people up and you don't want to waste time on people like that who refuse to believe in facts, who um, when you give them facts, they want to ignore it and still believe in something or a cause or an ideology that's demonstrably either evil, bad, or just can't work. You have some people who refuse to believe in facts. You have to do like uh, St. Paul or I don't know. I can't remember whether it was St. Paul, but uh, one of the uh, biblical figures uh, in the New Testament who actually say, you know, you dust your feet off and you move on. Uh, you know, when you run into people like that, uh, they, they just they're, and they're and they're the perfect perfect excuse me shabbat goy uh and that's what i'm going to start calling people like uh the, the caliph dj chump and uh and others who uh actually they loved to serve whatever evil ideology or the, the system itself you have some people who are wedded to uh either you know really in essence when they bury their hands their heads in the sand like that and ignore facts you, you they basically love evil and they, and they love the system, which um, is, is slowly but surely proving to the dumbest among us that it is not a good system. We just had to wait. And but by the time the, the critical mass of dummies that we need to wake up, wake up, it'll be too late. I think um, they'll have their robot. Uh, they'll have their automated weapons online. They'll have their spy grid, which uh, 5G is really going to help facilitate, and we'll talk about that. That's another topic for this Wednesday view. Uh, by the time the the masses that we need to wake up, wake up, it'll it'll probably be too late to physically stop these people through massive civil disobedience. But um, that remains to be seen. So, because in, the reason why waking yourself up and others is a solution because it at least sets you free. It's like um, Descartes when he said, I think, therefore I am. He proved to himself that he existed and that reality is real. Uh, you know, and, and the same same applies to this waking yourself up. But right now, let's stop it here. I've approached my time limit. Uh, stay tuned for the next video. This is Wednesday View.